the Shelby County Way Station. When open, a must stop. For truck traffic heading east on I-64. The scale of what they're hauling and the condition of the carriers used for hauling it are part of the safety checklist from weight to the wear on tires to the proper hazmat placards. What's also supposed to be in good shape, the rear impact guards. Every action that we take is evidence-based and data-based. Data Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg is counting on to help him make the pivotal decisions folks like Lois Durso. I have a website, it's stopunderrides.org. Who've lost loved ones in crashes with trucks. Her side of the car was impacted by the rear wheel of the trailer. Have been fighting for four years. Her daughter Roya was the front passenger in this car when it slid under the side of a semi-tractor trailer in Indiana the night before Thanksgiving. 2004. My daughter was an underride crash, but it was not recorded as an underride crash. That's consistent with this 2019 report by the U.S. Government Accountability Office on underride crashes, which suggested that those crashes have likely been underreported and recommended that better data is needed to help determine the effectiveness of side underride guards on trucks. Although many tests with and without side guards have been conducted, Secretary Buttigieg, before making any decisions, will weigh recommendations by an advisory committee on underwrite protection. It'll be a 20-member committee, including law enforcement, families of underwrite crash victims, and one of the biggest critics of mandating side guards a faction of the truck lobby, the Owner-Operator Independent Drivers Association. Show me what happens when a, a car driving 60 miles an hour hits uh, one of the side underwrite guards that are currently available on the market. They too want to see more proof, more consistent data. One of our big frustrations with the enforcement of, of federal regulations like this is that uh, certain law enforcement agencies in certain states have different interpretations or different practices, and it leads to unreliable data. According to Kentucky State Police, from 2017 to June 13th of this year, 283 people have been killed and another 2,686 injured in crashes involving underrides. On average, that's a person every day in the Commonwealth. But Kentucky State Police say that doesn't mean the underride necessarily caused the injury or the death. Meanwhile, Indiana State Police say they don't track underride crashes, meaning there is no box to check for underrides on their crash reports. Again, Lois Durso's daughter died in Indiana. Underrides are so underreported. Another data deficiency is on rear underride guards. Trailers with ones rusted and falling apart are not allowed to be on the road. An inspection of those guards are now required. Our bottom line is always safety. Data from the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration shows in the first five months of this year, inspectors nationwide cited rear guard violations 894 times. However, there were only six citations issued for no or improper rear end protection, a new violation. But none of the six resulted in trucks being taken out of service. In Kentucky so far this year, there have been 18 rear guard violations. We need to consider any measure that can uh, save lives on the road. It has to be evidence-based, has to be reasonable. We've got to recognize the, the roadway safety death situation in this country as the crisis that it is and take action. Lois Durso now has more confidence that will include side underride guards, not far down the road. It's in his hands, he can do it. And Lois Durso's crusade continues. She says she'll be in Washington, D.C. next week for roundtable discussions on truck safety and underrides in particular. John Charlton, WHS 11, on your side.